I'm Carlos Revelo. I'm Eduardo Arena. This is Yemayaso. Say hi, Mama. My name is Bardo Martinez. I am Gabriel Villa. And we're at Amoeba Records in Hollywood, California. And this is What's in My Bag. Chicano Batman. <laughs> First one, Novos Baianos, Acabou Chorarei. This is just 1973 bomb. If you know anything about Brazilian music, this is right in the center of music from Bahia. And they do it all. They'll do chorinhos, they'll do baian, sambas, uh, axés. I mean, they got it all under their belt and uh, they lived like in a commune up in Bahia. And, uh, <sighs> <laughs> I picked up this uh, reissue of a Johnny Guitar Watson, Three Hours Past Midnight. Frank Zappa credits this track as being the inspiration for his guitar soloing style. Johnny Guitar Watson used to play with his fingers and he used to pop the strings off the, slap them off the fretboard and give it a real percussive, nice sound. Three hours past midnight I like his 70s stuff. I don't like his 70s we, stuff. We have this difference. <laughs> he likes his 50s blues, I like his like 70s Superman lover, you know, funk. They call me the Superman lover, yeah. But something wrong, something wrong with me this year. That's where Snoop Dogg got all the style from, Johnny Guitar Watson in the 70s. I got Metallica and Just For All. I'm a big uh, metal fan. This is what my sister got me and I was uh, pretty young, and um, probably this is the reason why I do music and play drums. When you listen to this album, you uh, only listen to the drums. The bass, you cannot listen to the bass. Guitar, heavy guitar, and it's like so energetic that you're like, Oh my God, that was got me into music. So thank you Metallica for uh, this great album. And thanks to your sister for getting thank you that you. record. Thank you, yes. <laughs> thank you, Maria Teresa, I love you. A big inspiration of mine is uh, Caetano Veloso and the Tropicalia movement. So here you have uh, Gilberto Gil, Caetano Veloso, Cal Costa, Tom Z, Os Mutantes. <laughs> These cats took music to another level, which was like, okay, well, we're not only gonna just make music, but we're gonna make a statement, a project that represents Brazil in so many different ways and lights. Casal number five. There's like some soca music, French. Soca music, there's a lot of that in Panama. My wife's from Panama, so we spend a lot of time there, and it's the liveliest music. It's just so positive and, and rhythmic and syncopated. And this is, I think, 1983, so there's gonna be some cheesiness in here, but I'm hoping it's a good one. If not, I'm still gonna like it. I do. More guitar, I'm a guitar player, sorry guys. You can't use my name, so this is Jimi Hendrix as a sideman for Curtis Knight and the Squires. He was the lead guitar player in this band. He was commenting about how you can kind of hear where Jimi may have gotten some of his inspiration on his vocal stylings, because Curtis Knight seems, he sounds really similar to Jimi Hendrix's singing style. Think about it now and tell me. One of the songs that stood out to me on this one is called How Would You Feel? And it's basically talking about how unfair they felt being um, separate but equal. I like soundtracks and I like this movie. Hi, it's that guy, Kona Phrase. 
ACDC, Megadeth. I grew up with this, and all my friends were listening to rock. And remember some of my friends like trying to imitate Nirvana's Nevermind album. One of my neighbors with the drum set, he was banging on those drums so hard, frustrated, took the drum set and throw it out like on the window. And uh, that's how I got my first drum set, you know? His mom just like sell it to me for a dime and I was like, yes. I haven't heard this yet, but I just saw it. It's a boogie breakdown, South African synth disco from 1980 to 1984. You've got the love, you've got the power. And on what do we got here? Juno 60, we got a Jupiter 8. I've been using old organs. I have a YC30 Yamaha. There's nothing that could replace an old synth. They're just not made the same since from the 70s and, and 80s have a particular sound that the tones that, that are irreplaceable. So that's why I picked this record. This has been a record that I've been a fan of for half my life. I don't really know how to quite pronounce it. Uh, I always called it Iggy Bamyasi. There's a song in particular on here that's amazing. It's called Vitamin C. The drumming on it is just incredible and it stood out to me the first time I heard it. I'm also a big fan of Michael Caroli's uh, guitar playing. He had a clean strat and a very textured type of style, which was really different from what was going on with a lot of like prog and epic early 70s rock bands. You know, you hear a lot of guitar soloing, a lot of in your face Marshall, 100 watt stacks going. His was more like subdued, but still prominent and really beautiful. And of course I had to keep it real with my roots. A little bit of Opeth. just do it how they do it and there's no apologies about it 13 minute songs you go on a whole journey it's like watching a movie lately they've been getting into analog recording and just getting tones dialed in and, and they're sounding more like a jazz funk rock band nowadays they're like the pink floyd of death metal you know and uh, they just keep evolving and evolving and it gets more beautiful and more beautiful and i have a huge place in my heart for bands like Opeth that just like go for it i was listening to this on the way here, but I'm glad I found this on vinyl. This kind of collaboration reminds me of Buena Vista Social Club, when you have the old dudes, legends, playing with young people and doing new music and just like, Letting it flow, you know? Will Quantic and uh, Mario Galliano, that's the producers on here, um, they're doing something great. So thank you guys and keep doing it, keep working it. So we got Chico Buarque. This song, Construcción, it means construction. It's such an amazing song. It takes you to a construction site. It says like, there's a man, he's drunk. He had a long day, he's falling off. Look at him fall. <laughs> The music mirrors the lyrics, exactly. But the music is is so epic. I mean, we're talking about like a huge orchestra with all the drums and the samba happening under it. It's a really amazing, amazing track. Salon, I think he wanted to get it too. I think everybody needs to get this. Yeah, it's like cranes in the sky. Sometimes I don't want to feel It's a full story. It's the songs that are intertwined by interviews that she did with her family, and they're talking about real issues and real things, and you can't get more sincere than that. And the music in there is just, it's just so, it's just candy. My girl got me into this record, and just, just from the cover, it's just so bold. It's just so pure. Day of Judgment from the Ngozi family. It's pretty essentially punk rock music, I would say. It's loud, it's fast. They have amazing fuzz guitar solos, which I can never get enough of. The playing is just great. Really raw and just 
really sincere at the same time. We got Tim Maia, Chimi Maia. He's kind of like the godfather of Brazilian soul music. When Brazilians started taking funk and soul and putting it out themselves. Brazilians have so much cultural, musical heritage. It's like going straight to the center of the earth. If you start digging, you won't stop. If you're into Brazilian music, you'll Definitely. never stop digging. Oh, yeah. It just adds so much dimension to soul music. Soul music as we know it, as you know, Marvin Gaye, uh, Al Green, etc. Amazing cat. I gotta show you this album. R. Blakey. This guy, it's the best drummer in history. Please, don't think whatever I told you, I don't listen to jazz, jazz sucks. No, jazz is the shit. Buy yourself a record, listen to Miles Davis, listen to Coltrane, get inspired because this is like inspiration flowing. So excited about that. I've heard some of the songs that are so incredible. And this is a tribe called Quest. You know, Fife is, is gone and it's just weird and beautiful to know that someone's spirit is being left in this album and it's gonna be another classic that's gonna last a long, long time. You bastards overlooking street art, better yet street smart, but you keep us off the chart. Some of the fucking numbers and your statisticians. What the fuck you know about true competition? There's a lot of journalists and critics saying that there's like a psych rock revival, you know, and I think a lot of it's really owed to Dunian, whether people know it or not. People like Kevin Parker from Tame Impala were paying attention, Ruben from Unknown Mortal Orchestra. It wasn't lost in any of those amazing bands who ended up doing their own take on, I think, this kind of sound that these guys really were responsible for bringing it with a modern twist. I love Dunian. Los Grillos del Norte. I haven't listened to this. I love how they look. This is how we should look for the next tour. Yeah, right, that's it right there, <laughs> He's legit and the price was great. That was like gobble right there. I basically, I, basically <laughs> I discovered this kind of like gruperos kind of band, you know, like Mexican soul. Mexican soul. And, and through, through, through you guys actually, yeah, right. and through like, people by living here in LA, so this is very like, Los Angeles here looks like. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>